up on Membet here, Membet Amad Aleph, the new parish, Meshurach Milchamba. Okay, so that's the next thing that is Marine be Belashon Hakodesh, um, which is interesting because you would think that if you're if you're making these announcements, you want everybody to understand you. But okay, Meshurach Milchamba, B'Shar Shem Medaber Alam, when he's speaking to the people before they go to war, Belashon Hakodesh Ayim Medaber, he was speaking in Hebrew. Shene Amar Vayak Karbachel Milchamba, when you draw close to the war, Vinigash Hakohen, and the Kohen will draw close. Ze Kohen Meshurach Milchamba. This is the Kohen that's especially been anointed for the purpose of war, for making these announcements and leading the people to war. The Diber Alaam, and he speaks to the people, Blashon HaKodesh, in Hebrew. How we know what that means in Hebrew, the Gemara will say. The Amar Alehem, and he says to them, Shema Yisrael, hear Israel, Atem Kevim Ayom you know, Eloi Vechem, you are drawing close to your enemy. Aloi Vechem, you're drawing close against your enemy. The Lo Al Achechem, not against your brethren. Lo Yehuda Al Shimon, Lo Shimon Al Binyamin, not one tribe against the next, which sometimes happened in the uh, certainly in the pre-kingship period there when they had those uh, civil wars mm-hmm. um, that were you to fall in their hands when it, if, if you were fighting a civil war they're your brothers and they would have compassion on you and the people who rose who were uh, named and this was during a uh, this is one that, this is Pechach Ben Remal Yahu um, this was actually with the uh, you know with uh, when it was Yehuda and Yisrael after the uh, split of the kingship okay so um that the uh, that the uh, that, that the Israel had taken captives from Yehuda, and the uh, people said, if you take a look, Rashi summarizes it. If you look at like th- three lines into Rashi in the New Parak, he says, <laughs> They took a lot of captives from Yehuda. There was a prophet Ode. God was angry with Yehuda, and that's why you were taking them captive and you have smitten them without, uh, without you know any relief and now you want to take them as slaves he said return the captivity okay so he said might be you know God, get, God allowed you to win the war but send the captives back so what does the book say they took hold of the uh, of, of the captives and all those that were naked he'll be sure they clothed based from the booty and they put on clothes and they put on shoes and fed and give them to drink and they, and they anointed them and they put them on donkeys for all that were um, that were uh, uh, stumbling that all that were you know they were not able to stand for themselves and they brought them to Yericho the city of uh, palm, uh, palm trees by the brethren and they returned to Shomron so that's what will happen if you fall amongst your brothers but you, you're going against your enemy. That if they have, that if you fall in their hands, they will not have compassion. Do not. So on the one hand, that's you know, so that's something to be afraid of. Be aware that that's what you're getting yourselves into. Okay, but do not let your heart be uh, be softened. Do not be afraid. Um, do not fear. Don't tremble. Do not let your heart tremble. Be be, be afraid from the like a braying of the horses the tzichtuchei charavot and the clashing of the swords al uh, kiru do not be afraid the 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 the, 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 the uh, claim, cl- clamoring of the shields apparently I thought when it was that clamoring of the shields it meant like you know when the armies uh, uh, attack one another but the no, shields bring up it's but, that psychological warfare right so that's what Raji says right that's what Raji says they would bang their shields together on one side yeah. to make the other side fearful yeah. the Shafa'at HaKalgasim the flowing of the Kalgasim Rashi says Kalgasim means Chayalot I did not get a chance to look it obviously is some what probably a Greek word or something um, literally but it's used to mean oh like the oh, trampling of the boots or something right. oh interesting yeah it's kind of in Latin okay and what does he say Shafa'at means like the uh, stomping or something I thought it meant like the flowing of blood but that didn't make sense 
What does he say? No, no. What does he just say? The word shafaat kal gafi means noise. The noise. What? Glittering. Interesting. No, the sword. No, we have not up to the sword yet. Maybe I must say it. Clashing of the shield. And what's after clashing of the shield? He says glittering of the sword. So they translate kal. What? Hordes of enemy soldiers. Oh, like the shafa. I see, like the flowing. Okay, the hordes of the soldiers. Okay. Al tech bezu mikol kranot. Do not be afraid from the horns, from the blasting of the horns. Al ta'artu, do not tremble. In they call tzvachot, from the cries. Ki Hashem al-chichem holechim achem. Hashem is going with you. Heim ba'im b'nitzchono shabasar v'adam. They are coming with the victory, or like the, you know, the, with the strength of human beings. V'atem ba'im b'nitzchono shel makom. And you are coming with the victory, you know, with the strength of God. Plishim ba'u b'nitzchono shel galya. Plitchim came because of the valor, the valor, you know, of uh, of Goliath, of Goliath, Mahaya Sufa, what was his end? Rasus Nafabach, he fell by the sword, Vinafu Amobri Amon, and his pe- and his people fell by the sword. Bo uh, I'm sorry, Vinaflu Vinaflu Amon, his people fell. Bne Amon, Bromini Tronosho Shobach, the people of Amon came with the valor of Shobach, Maya Sofo, Lasuf Nafabach, he fell by the sword, Vinafu Amon, his nation fell. Fatar and you, Iatem Gain, you're not like this, Kia Shemokem Ole Kimachem, Hashem your God is going with you, Lilachem Lachem, and Zem Machane Aron, you are coming with God, you are coming with the Aron. Own, you will be victorious. So it's interesting. Right? On the one hand, he makes it aware, like, you know, this is not, uh, this is very, very serious. Like, what will happen if you fail, like, if, you know, if you are held captive, but then, um, but then, uh, you know, strengthens their heart, not by misrepresenting what the threat is and what the danger is, but by putting their faith in God. Okay, so now let's see what the Gemara says. My comma, what does it mean? How do we know that it has to be in Hebrew? Hachi kama, shenemar, vidiber. Okay, by the ten, by the Malalan Kodesh, Kodesh. All right, which is obviously there's a lot of debates in the Torah. Tosus discusses. Um, actually, let's take a look at Tosus. Tosus says like this. Um, so Tosus says, uh, where were we? Hachi kama shenem v'dibir. Yushami lama begin dichsi v'dibir. Harei kriya shema dichsi be v'dibar tabam v'hi ne'meres b'chol hashon. Ella writes or haba kriya shema that can mean any language. Ela begin to see by Amira, right? The Diber Kohen v'Amar, and then he says, "Harei parshas vidu ma'iser harei see by Amira v'nemeres b'chol hashon." So right, so Amar Rabbi Chagai never come hagosh of nemer l'halam hagosh when he kshua koni manigish shenem l'halam b'lashon kodesh shav kodesh shav kodesh shav kodesh. Okay, and then the Gemara goes on. Um, but anyway, it's not so clear how exactly we got Hebrew, and if anything, you would think that this is something that you might want in translation. But anyway, okay, moving back, maybe again, maybe we can emphasize God's salvation. There's a power to the use of the language. Back to the Gemara. Tanu Rabbanan, v'nigash ha'kohen v'dibar al'am. Yacho kohen she yurtzeh. Any kohen can speak to the people. It doesn't say that there's only a particular one. Tamu Lomar, v'dibar ha'shotrim. The shotrim speak. Uh, afterwards, right? And they say, you know, mi ha'ish ha'yarei v'rach ha'levav, yalech v'yashov v'veto, etc. Ma shotrim b'memuna. The same way shotrim are in an appointed position, because they're presumably appointed by the shoftim. They're the officers of the court. So af kohen b'memuna. Kohen has to be somebody specifically appointed pointed in that position. The Ema Kohen Gadol, so maybe it's the Kohen Gadol. Right? So do me the shoter, similar again to an officer. My shoter sheesh bimuna agabav, so the shoter is somebody who appointed that has somebody over him, the shofet. Af kohen sheesh bimuna agabav, it has to be a kohen that's been appointed that reports to somebody. So who is that? Um, kohen gadol, nami ha'ika melech, haba agabav, how about the king? The king is above him in the hierarchy, like we saw before, the king gives the sefer Torah to the, uh, to the melech by, 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 by hakel. So the Gemara says, no. Ba'avodato kama, in the context of the Avod in the base of Mikdash, there's nobody higher than the Kohen Gadol. So it has to be somebody who's appointed to the task, but lower than the Kohen Gadol. The Amos Gan, maybe it's the vice Kohen Gadol. So, no, Sgan Lav Memunahu. He's not really appointed, which doesn't mean he's not appointed, but he's not appointed for this type of a task. So Sgan really has only one function. The tiny Yitana Brisa, I'm Rebbe Chanina Sgan Kohanim, Sgan Kohanim, so Rebbe Chanina, who himself is the Sgan Kohanim, Lamas Gan Memunah, or Lam 
for what purpose is the Skan appointed? Sheim ira bo psu bo koin gadol nichnas umeshamish tachtav that he is there to replace the koin gadol if the koin gadol dies. His the job, president. he's the vice president, right? He has nothing really to do other than to be the replacement for the koin gadol, so he does not have any other type of a function which would exp- so he cannot be the the guy who's appointed for the purposes of war. Now Tosu actually raises an interesting question. Tosu says the im tomar hamina b'sanhedrin ter koin gadol kishum nachem achirim kolam ovim zeh. So basically, this Gan plays a role in assisting the Kohen Gadol. He's not just waiting for the Kohen Gadol to die, like when the Kohen Gadol is receiving warners or is giving consolation, the Gan is there somehow, you know, assisting him. Okay? And he passes him the Torah, right? So he has a status of being appointed for certain things. Things. So Tosu says, <laughs> Yes, he was appointed to certain tasks. A lot of people appointed that. But but biblically speaking, it might might be that his you know fellow Kohanim had him do certain jobs and he was given certain tasks. But that was more out of like you know a uh, a decision like an internal Kohanim decision to give him that type of a role. But it's not a biblically recognized status. It's like types of people that the Kohanim might have appointed. You know, different types of people to take on different levels of responsibility. But it is not a biblically recognized status. So what it's saying is, is that the status of the Mimun, as far as the Torah recognizes it, uh, of the Skan, which is funny, like I don't remember seeing anywhere in the Torah that it speaks about a status of a Skan, but whatever, it says the only biblical status there is to be ready to take over for the Kohen Gadol. So this has to be some other type of a status. Okay, so back to the Gemara. Why is that language? It's obviously a very evocative language, right? Because we know about Shema Yisrael. All you need is the zuchut of saying Shema Yisrael, right? And then I, I will protect you. You will not fall in their hands. Pretty low level. Yeah, exactly. Tanu Pamayim medaber imam. He would speak to them twice. Achat besafar once by the border city before they left the uh, actual, um, you know, home uh, uh, country itself. The achat b'melchama and once right before they actually, uh, you know, had the battle. The safar mahu omer. What would he say at the border city? Shimu dvarai divrei ma'archei milchama. The Chazru, um, the, the, the Chazru. He would say, "Listen to what the uh, you know the uh, the uh, uh, I'm not, the officers or whatever are telling you. The Shofim are telling you when they tell you like who is the one who is fearful, who is the one who married a woman, who is the one who built a house. So listen to what they said. And if you're in one of those categories, go back. Okay. But Milchamama who Omer, what would he say and when it came time for the war? Then when they were about to actually have the battle, he would give them this. Uh, you know, he would give them this." Uh, this uh, encouraging speech and say do not be afraid okay now by the way it's quite interesting because if you look at the Torah the Torah has the order in the opposite way <laughs> right the Torah says that the Kohen comes and he says you know and then it says so the Torah first he says do not be afraid you're going into battle do not be fearful and then the Shotrim come and say you know if you're in this category go home and if you're in that category go home the Gemara logically reverses the order. I mean, it doesn't deal with the psukim, but logically, you might as well tell people to go home earlier, and you might as well give them the, you know, the uh, the courage right before they actually engage in the battle. Okay, now Kenegad Arba. Now that's four languages: Al Yirach, Al Tiru, Al Tachbezu, Al Tartzu. Kenegad Arba Ad Zvarim Shov Dei Kochavim Mosim. That corresponds to four things that they, the, the non-Jews, the enemies, would do in order to make them fearful. Magifin, they would clang their uh, shields. Umarin, they would blow the horn. Tzavchim, they would scream out, Viromsin, and they would trample. Okay. Now we get to talk about the story of uh, Goliath, because that's part of the whole message. It's actually quite interesting, right? Just out of, before we get to it, like, here obviously he's, um, uh, what's it called? Um, 
uh, when you speak ad hoc, he's uh, ex- extemporate, extemporizing. Anyway, right? <laughs> he's speaking ad here. Anyway, he's ex- speaking ad hoc. Uh, he's like not a fixed text. He's saying like, don't be afraid. And then he's uh, elaborating. He's embellishing. So is that elaboration and embellishing? Does that have to be in Hebrew? Right? I mean, I find the whole thing so fascinating of all the things that have to be in Hebrew. This thing, which his whole goal is to like speak to the hearts of the people. If Hebrew, I mean, if they're natural languages, Hebrew, it's one thing. But you know. But if it's uh, that not necessarily the most natural language, it's funny that that would be the language that you would be limited to speak in. Would that only be the fixed text that's in the Torah? When he speaks about Goliath and whatever else he decides to say in order to give a rousing speech, would that have to be in Hebrew? It doesn't make sense to say that, but yes, anyway. Couldn't this be an argument that... Hebrew is really what Jews are supposed to be. Well, yes, clearly. I mean, obviously that was true in the Torah, you know, that they were speaking. But the fact that you have to have a whole discussion about whether it's Nehemiah and Bechol mm-hmm. speaks to the fact that there would be a time when it would not make the most sense to talk this way. The whole thing's anachronistic, right? Well, clearly. Right? I mean, some of... The Torah is not going to reference Goliath. Right. the first thing. Right, that's a good point, too. by the sword. Well, that's a good point, too. Okay, so Goliath, that's a good point, too. Goliath, I'm Rabbi Yochanan. So now we're going to do a Russia on, on God, David and Goliath. Sha'ama begilui panim. The Latin word Goliath is he stood with a like brazenness, you know, chutzpedik in front of God. We snare Kodesh Baruch Hu. Shenema barulachem ish v'yeirei lot. Choose for yourself a person and let him come down and fight against me. Ve'ini shal Kodesh Baruch Hu. And what he really meant was like, I'll take on your God. Okay, because each means God. Shenema Hashem ish milchama. Especially in the context of war. Okay, Amar Kodesh Baruch Hu. So God says in response, Hareini miyap yolol yidei ben Ha, I'll make him fall in the hand of a son of man, like of a child. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a playing off of Ish, and he fell in the hand of a Ben Ish. Okay, how's that? That was a biblical idea, that if you lost the war, it meant your God lost the war. Like, yeah. come right, on. Right, and, uh, uh, right. Right. Good point, too. Right, absolutely. Good point. I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Mishum Rabbi Meir. Shloshem HaKomot Lachtu Piv La'uto Rasha. Three places, this wicked person, his, this, uh, his, his own mouth trapped him. He said, the words that ultimately would become would come true. Echad one brulachem ish v'yered elai. Choose yourself a man and let him come come down against me. So that's somehow suggesting that he will like like descend upon him, like so conquer him. The idach imuchali hilachem iti v'hikain v'hikuni v'hikani v'hikani. What's the, what's the grammar? Anyway, if he will be able to fight against me and smite me. So even though he said if he'll be able to fight against me and smite me, but he did say that he will smite me. The idach in the third the come. David, am I a dog? That you're coming against me with sticks, but ultimately describing him in a way in which he would be. He would be beaten like a dog. So the Gemara says, if that's true, David Nami David also said to him, You are coming against me with the sword and the spear and um, and so on. So therefore, David also is saying that you're coming. To get, you know, you're attacking me. So why don't we say David also said something that was about his own downfall? About of its own downfall? And it says no. How do Amr lay no? Because the end of the Pasuk is, Anochi ba'alecha b'shem Hashem tzvakot elokei ma'arachot Yisrael. You are coming to me with a sword and I am coming against you in the name of God, which is exactly like the language that the Kohen Gadol with the Kohen Mashuk Nechama was using. We're coming in the name of God. But the point being that as opposed to just, just saying like, Ditmiya, how do you plan, what, you're planning on, on coming against me like a dog? David sort of ended his statement but by saying, you think that that's, you know, your power, but in the end, I am coming with the power of God. So that was not seen as trapping himself with his own words. Um, okay. Asher Chirafta, that you have uh, blasphemed. And the uh, Philistine um, uh, grew close, g- uh, rising up early and going, and, and, you know, in, in the morning and in the evening. Amr Rabbi Yochanan, so we're echoing the Kriyat Shema we said before, Shema Yisrael, so what else is Hashkem Beherav? He'd make these big announcements right at time of Kriyat Shema in order to prevent them. It probably echoes the earlier point. Does the Chus of Kriyat Shema save them? Right? And here he's preventing them. And it's all about, again, this theme about God is the 
power with which we fight. Okay, so and that was like what David said. I'm coming with shame Hashem. So he is countering that. And he stood there for 40 days um, challenging the people. 40 days that the Torah was given. Now, what does that make sense? Rashi says, well, since it took 40 days for the Torah to be given, say, that, 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 uh, that sort of delay allowed Goliath to stand against them for 40 days. So again, it's very much right about the power of God and the power of Torah. So if the Torah was delayed for 40 days, you know, in its giving, Goliath had the ability to stand against them for those 40 days. 40 days. And the person of Benayim came from the camps of Plishtim. So how is Galyat being described as Ish HaBenayim? My Benayim. Amarav um, he is constructed and built you know he's perfect from any blemish um, he's only like the average amongst his brothers you should see if you think he's big you should see his older brother okay and we're going to discuss in a minute a passage that speaks about the four children um, he's like built like you know a building like he's huge and he's solid and so on Rabbi Yohan and Amar bar me up puppy Vachada Nani. So Benoni is basically a hundred um I mean, Rashi basically says it means he had like a hundred fathers and one mother. So basically, that his mother like slept with a hundred men. And Tosus actually, uh, Rashi says so that he didn't know who his father was. But Tosus actually quotes an interesting agadita or whatever that believes that somehow, if uh, they all sort of uh, it all happened at the same time, you know, um, then uh, he could actually have multiple fathers um, <laughs> biologically. What's the Russia? From between many. Uh, uh, you know, from Benayim, from ben, it's Benayim. You know, from you that? like the word Papa. Yeah, I don't know. If you think you look at Rashi, Rashi says so, Papi. Rashi says if you want to look at Rashi, Barmea Papi Vacharanani Ben Hataarovet from the mixture. Shabo Harbe Anashim Alimo Belayla Chatanit Abraham Nechad Nimsa Echad Aviv Kulan Min Naafim. One is the father, and they're all adulterers. And Rashi says Nani is Zehu Av Belas in Parsi. I don't know. Nana, I thought was a grandmother. And we Papi, that would be a Papa. Um, anyway, Pashtara. I don't know what that is. I don't know what Pashtara is. But, uh, anyway. But Papa and Nana are ancient. I have no idea. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like it, but anyway. Okay. Um, so, but but this is. Uh, what, what, anyway, but what was this? May up, right, 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 exactly. But a but hundred fathers and one mother, or something like that. The Galyat Shemo, his name was Galyat Migat. From Gat, Tani Rav Yosef, Shakol Dashimet Imok Gat. That's to keep on the previous theme. Everyone trampled, you know, had sex with his mother, like you know, like you uh, thresh in the uh, in the uh, Gat, in the uh, no, where, the, where the pressing no, food, the no, wine no, press, no, trample no, wine, right? Ksiv Maarot Vekarina and Maarachot, right? Which is God. Uh, um, so uh, what, what's the pasuk there? Uh, um, Maarot Plishtim, right? From the uh, from the caves of the Plishtim. Or is it Marchot please team the, uh, the 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 troops? So Shakol Ha'arubi Imo, it's everybody basically had sex with his mother. The word Ha'ara is the, the specific act, the way of describing the act of intercourse. Um, okay, Xiv Har um Harpa, the Xiv Arpa. So this is the question about who um, his mo- uh, his mother is. We're going to see in a minute. It says uh, that that there were four children. So there's a later pasuk that speaks about how David went to war um, against, and there was uh, four separate battles with the children of Harpa, and one of them is Galyat Migat. So it actually sounds like that these were actually. Um, I mean, that is described later in the later in the Navi, but it actually sounds like that these actually. Were were the brothers of Galyat that he fought against in different battles and that the mother's name was Harpa but there's another place where her name is called Arpa we know Arpa by the way from the whole root story okay so uh, so Siv Harpa Siv Arpa Rav Shmo Chadamar Harpa Shma her name was Harpa the Ramanikishma Arpa Shekol Orfino Tam Me'achareha 
everybody basically the word oref is like the back of the neck everybody um, has uh, you know uh, has sex with her from behind so again with this whole thing about her mother his mother you know having sex with all these men the Chadam Arpa Shema her name was Arpa Zaman Nika Shema Harpa she called Dashi Karifot everybody tramples her like Karifot which is like essentially grain that gets trampled so once again keeping on the same theme there the woman spread the blanket over the pit and she scattered on it like this grain in order for the you know to come and to fall into the pit it was a class, one of those classic traps anyway so different ways of describing you know her mother and having sex with all these men his mother if the uh, you know foolish one is ground up in the uh, sort of in the you know in the mill like the uh, like the harifut like the like the grain is is milled so again harifut means means like the milling the trampling of grain okay that are baat ela yodula harpa these four killed sons were born to harpa begat and david and they fell in the hand of david ubiyad avadav in the hand of his servants mind you what were the names of the four and actually this is this is actually in the psukim it names these four sons amr of chizda saf umid Don Galyat Vishbi Binov. Okay, so that's actually it's funny that you have to quote him saying it. It's actually in the Psukim. And he fell in the hands of David and his servants. Tihsiv Fatishak Arpa Lachamota the root dov kaba. So now, our, now we're connecting this arpa to the arpa from the root story, which is obviously very symbolically significant, because David descends from root, and arpa's root sister, who does not stay around. So now we are going to say that ultimately they were descendant from that arpa. Okay, so arpa ki- kissed her mother-in-law, and Ruth cleaves to her. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak Amr Kadosh Baruch Hu Yavo Bnei Haneshuka, that the children of the one who gave the goodbye kiss, right, who abandoned her mother-in-law. Come, the Yitlubiad Bnei Hadivuka, and let them fall in the hands of the ones who stick, who stuck close to her mother-in-law. So it is really sad because Ru- Orpah does not seem like a bad person, you know. <laughs> okay, so she stuck around all that time. She just did not have the same self-sacrificing nature of Ruth. But now that here her children fall in the hands of David, okay, Darish Rava. Bishar Arba Dma'at for the reward of the four tears, Sho Rida Arpa Al Khamata that she cried for her mother in law, Zahtavi Yata Mimeno Arba Agi Borin, so she had these four, you know, my, uh, you know, you know, mighty uh, children. Like, you know, if Galyat was only an average of the four children, right? So in the end they all got wiped out in battle. But first she had them, you know, she had them as a reward for the to, for the crying. Um Shinema Vatisenakola Vukolan Vatifkena Od. So so I pres- it might be dar- dar- saying Tisena Kolan and Tifkena is two and O doubles it as four Rashi says that it's crying it's both eyes so that's two and the O doubles it to four okay Ksiv Chetz Chanito so now back to Goyat it says the uh, the um, arrow of his sword Ksvinen Eitz Chanito the wood of his sword so Amar Rebbe Lezer Adayin lo higiyanu v'chetzi shvacho shalo to rasha so chetz is like half that all of describing how tall he was and how mighty and as victorious that only that's not even half of his praise of how how you know uh, mighty he was um, Mikan, so why did it only describe half you're not supposed to talk about the praise of the wicked it's true he was very mighty or whatever but the Torah did not fully describe it because like let's not go back maybe to the discussion before about flattery but anyway let's not too, too much build up the Rishayim so the Mar says well if that's true, don't discuss it at all. Why are you just at all describing his his valor and his might? Uh, so it says, No, because you have to f- f- describe how great it was that David, you know, um, uh, uh, beat him. So you have to speak about how great Gaius was, not for the sake of Gaius, for the sake of David. Okay. So it's a little counterbalance. It's a little rachamim for Orpa, right? It's expressed here. Yeah, that she got these four valors. Right. right. Yeah. So it's offset. The harshness is a little bit offset. Correct. By these Correct. Okay. 
Bnei Amon, okay, Bnei Amon, Bo Bnei Tchunos Shel Shovach. Okay, it came with the uh, with the valley of Shovach, which is its old story in Sefer Shmuel. Okay, but where it's the same thing is described in Divrei uh, Hayamin, he's called Shovach. So Ksiv Shovach, Ksiv Shovach. So Rav Shmo Charamar Shovach. Shmo, his name was Shovach. So Rav Minikre Shmo Shovach. Why is it called Shovach? Shasui Ksiv Shovach. He was built like a uh, like a pigeon coop, like tall maybe and very very tall. The Charamar Shovach Shmo, his name was Shovach. Let me Kriyat Shmo Shovach. So Kol Aroato, anybody who would see him Nishpach Lefana would like you know would like uh, spill out before him maybe like lose control of his bowels or like melt in front of him kikitone like a pitcher okay eshpato kitever patuach kulam giborim his uh, quiver is like an open grave they are all uh, uh, you know uh, mighty men so what does that mean Rav Shmuel so Ami Vamile Rav Ami Vravas Ichadamar Bishaksha Zorkin Chait when they shoot an arrow um, Osim Ashpatot Ashpatot Shel Chalalin they make uh, you know they make mounds and mounds like an Ashpah he has like a garbage heap they make mounds and mounds so this is by the way this I didn't give you the context this is talking about the uh, the armies of Nebuchadnezzar okay so we're going in Darshan and Psukim that deal with like enemies that fought against the Jews okay so these are the armies armies of Nebuchadnezzar. Um, and also, Rashi says, it's a similar, like, a debate of Rav and Shmuel, Darshan in Shovach and Shofach. So here's a debate of Rav and Shmuel about this word, about Ashpato, which could mean quiver, but could also mean, like, a garbage heap. Okay? So let's take a look. So it says like this. Mishash is up in hate when these armies shoot arrows, Osin Ashpatot Ashpatot Shochalalim. They make mounds and mounds of corpses. So that's Ashpatot Kever Patuach, like an open grave. The Shema Tomar Umanim, the Krav, maybe you'll say, oh, that's just because they're expert at battle, but they're not themselves, you know, uh, mighty and powerful. They're just like good, you know, good archers. Talmud Lomar, Kulam Giborim. No, they are all valorous, mighty men. Okay, Zechad Amar, no. What's Ashpatot mean? Bishash Osin Tzorchehem, when they have to release themselves, Osim Ashpatot Ashpatot Shel Zevel. They make mounds and mounds of excrement. Okay, which basically just means that they're so huge that that's how much like food that they have to, you know, discharge. Okay, which is a funny way of praising them. The Shemetomarmikholim Meayimim. No, that's not because they're just so huge. That's just because they have like a, you know, that they, they have a bad digestive system, right? They've got exactly digestive issues. Tamud Lamar, Kulam Giborim. No, 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 no. They're mighty, which means also, I guess, they have good uh, control of their bowels. I'm Rabbi Mari. Shmami na Haiman did not fish zivle. You see from this that somebody that's got a lot of excrement, Choli Meayim, who has a general rule because we had this Havamina that maybe they have a problem with their stomach. So if somebody's got a lot of excrement, they've got a stomach problem. So I don't know why that's such a chiddush. Anyway, Lemay Naftimine, why, why is this important to know? Litroch Benavshay, this person should then take care of themselves. If that's what's happening to you, go see a doctor, go daven. Okay. The Agadalev Ish. Daven? What? That's what Rashi says. Okay. Levakesh lo refuot. No, I'm sorry. Rashi says levakesh lo refuot. Rashi says go go see a doctor. Oh, I'm fine. Daga, da, that's what you do when you're sick? Is you see a doctor? Okay. Uh, but daga believe yish, um, yishchena. I think I'm trying to remember. Is it yishchena? I don't know because we're going to dark in both ways. I don't remember the way it's originally read in the. It's, it's written in the pasuk. Anyway, if there's if there's worry in a heart's man, he should be either yishchena or yishchena. Let's take a look. Ravam Ravasi Chanamer. Yasichenami da'ato. Oh no, both are reading it. Yischen, excuse me, with a sin. Charama yasichenami da'ato. Try to put it out of your mind. How do you deal with problems? Whatever you distract yourselves. Try to put it out of your mind. Charama yasichen alachem. No, you have to talk to somebody. So here you see the Gemara believes in therapy. Okay, <laughs> what do you have to do if you got a problem? Don't just try to push it down or whatever. Then it's going to resurface or distract yourself from it. You need to talk about it in order to relieve that so concern. Act so, so it doesn't act up in your mouth. Okay, we. We'll end with this. <laughs>